Hello Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Sean Fow sent a message. He's a patron. And so he sent his message to me via Patreon. And I'm always quite sure to see those. Sean is KA3UFV. His question is, Hi Dave, would you be interested in doing a bit on a folded dipole? I'm a bit confused by how they work specifically. I don't understand why they're a half wavelength in length rather than a quarter wavelength in length since they're essentially folded in half. Um, before we jump into answering this, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Robbie. He's one of my newest uh, patro patrons through Patreon. You too can become a patron by going to uh, patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's jump in. Uh, let's see what a dip uh, folded dipole is. Okay, a folded dipole we use usually these days um, 450 ohm ladder line. It's two conductors uh, that is all plastic and there's holes in it so it looks sort of like a ladder. Okay, and this is 450 ohms. So when you create a folded dipole, you've got two dipoles made of this wire here with two conductors. You attach these at the end, break that one right there, and that is the feed point. Now, normally you'd think, well, this is just a, a full wave, wavelength of wire. Well, no, it's not really. It acts like a half wave. And that is because, in essence, if you look at the way this is constructed, it's as though there are little capacitors uh, spread lengthwise between the two halves. Okay, all the way down. It's the capacitance of these two wires being near each other. And it doesn't have to be very much capacitance to keep these things uh, together. Let's see how the... Where go. Okay, we're going to take a look at... This is the 2023 ham, or, uh, ARRL handbook. And it talks here about folded dipoles, and it gives a picture on the next page. And this is exactly what I've drawn here. And this is what it has to say. A folded dipole has exactly the same gain and radiation pattern as a single wire dipole. However, because of the mutual coupling between the upper and lower conductors that divides antenna current equally between the conductors, the feed point impedance of a single wire dipole is multiplied by the square of the number of conductors in the antenna. So in other words, it acts just like a dipole. It says in this case, there are two conductors in the antenna, so the feed point impedance is two squared, or four, times that of a single wire dipole. A three wire folded dipole would have a nine times higher feed point impedance and so forth. So this uh, feed point impedance right here is four times 50, which is uh, 200 ohms, okay? So you can feed this with ladder line. You wouldn't feed it straight with coax because that's a 50 to 200 ohm mismatch. You're looking at a um, 4 to 1 uh, SWR, okay, if you feed it. So there's going to have to be a tuner or something down here. Now, I want you to note something. If you get little spacers out or something like that, and put a third wire here and short these at the end, you get the same thing going on. One, two, three wires. So you multiply the standard impedance here, which is 50 ohms, by three squared, which is nine, gives you four, five, zero. So if you were to feed this thing with 450 ohm ladder line, Okay, you would have this coming out not at 200 ohms, but at 450 ohms, which is exactly the impedance of this ladder line. 
So you've got a wonderful impedance match right here. Give or take, there's always issues that cause the impedance to vary. But this could go down to a 9 to 1 ballon. Okay, somewhere between the antenna and the shack and go into 50 ohm coax and everything is absolutely beautifully lined up. 9 to 1 ballons are readily available and the 450 ohm ladder line is readily available. So you can make this thing right here with just three conductors. You can create like um, little plastic spacers that go along here that you can thread those wires through so that they stay the same distance apart. It's kind of important that they stay the same distance apart so you get nice even impedance matching and get a nice radiation pattern out of it. So there you go. That's the half-wave dipole and what you can do with it. So there you go. That's the half-wave dipole and what you can do with it. So um, let me make sure we've answered it. Where did everything go? Okay. So that's the half-wave dipole and everything that you can do with it. It's really a very interesting um, antenna. I've never used one, but I know of people who do. And if you have a long run to get from your transmitter to the antenna, uh, you will find that this uh, would be a good way to do it because that 450 ohm ladder line has very low losses. Okay, so John, I hope that answers your question. And thank you for being a patron. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you can go to decastlercom support and find a way that works for you. Until we meet again, 73.